Okay, let's take a look at what we call enthalpy of chemical reactions. And what we're going to do is make this a basic introduction of this idea of enthalpy in, in a chemical reaction. Basically, what we're talking about when we're talking about the enthalpy of the reaction is the amount of energy released by that reaction or the amount of energy absorbed by that reaction. So we're going to mention a few terms and differentiate between those terms, but again, basically we're talking about the amount of energy released or absorbed in a chemical reaction. And that symbol that we're going to use for enthalpy is the symbol H, so oftentimes we'll be talking about delta H or the difference in the energy from our initial conditions to our final conditions. So let's first of all, let's define energy. And usually when we talk about energy, we're relating it to heat. Um, work is definitely a factor in this process, but that's more of a physics concept. So when we're talking about energy, we're more concerned with uh, the heat. So anyway, the definition of energy says here, it's the capacity to do work or produce heat, that which is needed to oppose natural attractions. And in that process, usually here, we're talking about chemical bonds. Law of conservation of energy is very similar to the law of conservation of mass. Basically, it says that we can transfer or convert energy from one form to another. You simply can't create or destroy. The same way with law of conservation of matter, you can rearrange atoms, but you can't create or destroy atoms. Law of conservation of energy does the same thing, just with energy as opposed to matter. So just like the amount, of the amount of matter in the universe is, is constant, so is the amount of energy in the universe is, is constant. The difference between energy and heat can be a little bit confusing. We said that energy is the ability to produce heat, but then we say heat involves the transfer of energy between objects due to a temperature difference. So when, when we're talking about energy and heat, we're essentially going to use these two terms synonymously. So as we're talking about thermodynamics and I say, well, how much heat is released from that reaction? I can also be saying, well, how much energy is released from that reaction? You just, again, want to use these terms in, in a general way. So energy is a state function when work and heat are not. So when something's a state function, again, we're, we're, we're interested in the initial conditions and the final conditions. And what we're going to do is we'll calculate the change in enthalpy or the change in energy is equal to, we're going to say, final minus initial. And we'll, we'll get to all that and talk about that in a little bit more detail. As we're talking about these processes, two terms we want to keep straight, the system and the surroundings. When we're talking about the system, we're basically talking about the chemical reaction that's taking place inside the vessel. Usually that vessel is some sort of beaker or some sort of glassware. The surroundings then is everything else. So when we say heat is released, in other words, it's released from the system, it means it's released into the surroundings. Or if we say heat is absorbed into the system, it means it's absorbed from the surroundings. Now the surroundings are going to include everything, the beaker, the table, your hand if you're holding the reaction, everything outside of the actual reaction itself. As you know, we break energy into two processes, endothermic and exothermic. And these terms, you should be familiar with these terms. If you remember, endothermic means the heat flow is into the system, you're absorbing energy from the surroundings, and our sign for H would be positive. If something is exothermic, it means energy is flowing out of the system. So what we'll say is energy is released the sign for H for exothermic processes is negative. So in these two processes, the energy gained by the surroundings must be equal to the energy lost by the system. So we're always talking about system and surroundings, and there's an exchange of energy between those two states. Okay, so let's just go over some 
examples of exothermic versus endothermic processes. Now again, you want to differentiate between physical systems and chemical systems when we're talking about things being exothermic versus endothermic. And as you'll see with all of these examples, these are all physical processes. We'll talk about chemical processes a little bit later. Okay, if your hand gets cold when you touch ice, is that an exothermic or endothermic process with your hand? So is the heat leaving your hand or going into your hand? So when you touch ice, the, the heat is leaving your hand and going into warming up the ice. So for your hand, the process is exothermic. Heat is leaving the system and going into the ice to warm it up. The ice gets warmer when you touch it. So it, for the ice, that would be an endothermic process. So the heat is going into the ice as we indicated up here. So that's the endothermic end of this process or side of this process. Water boiling in a kettle. So if you are taking water from 99 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius and you're gonna boil it, you've gotta put heat into the water so that's an endothermic process. If water vapor is condensing, it's going from the gas phase to the liquid phase. So it has to be cooling. To get a system or to get something to cool down, you've got to release heat from it. So that's an exothermic process. Okay, so when we talk about chemical reactions, which we will do most of the time in here, what we can do is think of endothermic and exothermic in terms of energy diagrams. So what I'm going to do is draw one diagram for each, the exothermic and endothermic. On the x-axis we have energy, and remember our unit for energy is joules, and on the, I'm sorry, the y-axis, I think I said x-axis. On the x-axis here then, we're going to have what we call the reaction coordinate. And what that is, is it, is it basically represents time. In other words, the process of the reaction from the beginning to the end. The reason we don't just call it time is because the scale, the, uh, the x-axis won't be to scale. It might take seconds for this reaction to take place. It might take days. So anyway, in an exothermic reaction, if your reactants, which we're going to label R, start here, and they're releasing heat when they become products, you're going to go down in energy from that level to that level. Now usually reactions take a little bit of energy to get going, so we have this increase in energy and then a decrease in energy. The overall difference between the energy level of the reactants and products we refer to as the change in enthalpy. We'll talk about this in more detail, this, this area here when we talk about kinetics, but for right now, what we're interested in is the, the initial energy and the final energy. When you release energy, that's an exothermic process, and your energy goes down. In an endothermic process, it's the opposite. If our reactants start here, we're absorbing heat, so our products would have a higher energy, and our graph would look like that. And again, we'll talk about that region of the graph a little bit later. But now here our delta H value is going to be the difference between our reactant level and our product level. So when we're going to calculate delta H for the reaction, what we want is the delta H value for all of our products minus the delta H value for all of our reactants. So what we're interested in is the initial conditions and the final conditions. We're not too concerned with what happens in the middle here. Again, we'll talk about that when we talk about kinetics, but it's those initial conditions and those final conditions that we're, we're concerned with. Okay, so that's a, a very basic introduction to enthalpy, and what we're gonna do in the rest of this unit is explore this a little bit more carefully. So if you have questions, uh, well, you're welcome to email them to hannonandchemistry at gmail, and I will talk to you in the next podcast.